David. Uh, I'd like to thank the mayor for showing up to uh, the youth, uh, Star Wars, for her uh, support of our youth, by him and uh, St. John. And of course, I'd like to thank um, Congressman <laughs> <laughs> Brian for uh, hosting it, putting it on for our youth. Thank you. Uh, let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks and praise for this glorious day. We ask your blessings, your mercy, your grace on the city of St. John, Stafford County. We ask your blessings on all of Kansas, the United States, and all of the world. Father, we ask a special blessing tonight on this council and all those who are here. We ask that you bless each one of us, you bless our families. We ask that you would give our mayor and council uh, wisdom knowledge, love, understanding, to be able to carry out the works that you have appointed them to do. Help them to know that Jesus Christ is first in all things that we do. Bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sir. Are there any additions to the agenda? So be it. Second. Second. All in favor? Um, city. Should I say three? That's fine. Um, last time I spoke a little bit about safe routes and I brought up the subject and I know everyone agreed that it would be good to do the phase one and before we get too far into it I just wanted to be clear that with phase one is the plan that we would want to go on phase two get accepted with that and I just want to make sure people are on board as we plan for budgets in the next few years that that will be an 80-20 so they would match up to 80% and we would expect a 20% community match so that's something to be aware of if you want to continue with just the phase one um, planning um, that is 100% reimbursement but there is an engineer that we have been talking to who has done safe routes to school before and so that's the contract in your packet that you're looking at and he's here to present and talk more a little bit about that. I'm Paul Stoner with Aviation Associates. Um, so I don't know, I wasn't here for the last one, so I don't know how much background got on the safe routes to school, but it's a, it's a two phase application process. So phase one, you're asking for planning money to create your safe routes to school. So if you're accepted, if you're chosen for funding for phase one, you create your safe routes plan and you turn that in, back into KDOT the second year and then they choose from, usually they fund about 10 or 12 phase one grant applications and then maybe about half of those they actually fund for construction and most of that money is for sidewalks. So. The first, first phase, which is what we're working on now, uh, it's $15,000 grant money to write the Safe Routes to School plan. So when that gets turned in, and if they select it for funding, you could build up to $200,000 worth of sidewalk in your community as part of the Safe Routes to School plan. And that $200,000 is 80 points, so the city would have to match 20% of that. So I put together a contract, and this is for us to assist Sydney uh, in, in putting together an application for this phase one grant. Uh, there's two line items on there. Uh, the second one is an optional mapping, and that would not have to be done to do this phase one. But what you see on the wall over here is, is a, your lots of blocks map. It was. I was surprised but our company did that uh, many years ago in 86 and I talked to our home office and it was done by hand, it's a hand drawing so it's not something that we can you know, access on the computer. So that line item is for us to create uh, a digital copy of that map so it can be put over photography and then it's really useful in planning like we would use it for the safe routes but it could be used for water utility maps or city utility maps the city will get some use out of it uh, in the future. But as far as that line item goes, uh, we need to wait until we talk to the county appraiser 
because I stopped by their office today, and unfortunately, he was not in. And their cartographer, the mapping lady, Marilyn, she was not in either. Because there is a possibility that they have already converted this to a CAD file, and it may be available. And they may just give it to the city for no charge. So we definitely need to find out if, that's, if it's available. Uh, so and that, that's our charge. We were to create it, but it may be something we can just get from the camera. But it, it is really handy for planning, and if you want to keep uh, utility mapping uh, up to date, it's good to have as well. Uh, so, do you have questions on safe routes? I do. Okay. Okay, so Sydney, when you came to talk to us last time, the indication you gave us was there was going to be no expense to us to be a part of it. Now we're looking at a contract for $4,800. And that's um, if we try to do it within our office, this is just an option. We can still try to continue to do it and see what we can come up with, but if we wanted to go with someone who's more skilled and knows what he's doing, that's another option to bring to the table. Okay. Um, is there going to be grant money at some phase down the line to cover this expense, or is this going to be out of pocket to the city? The 20% No, no the 48-20 in this contract. Um, that's something I would like to talk to Carolyn on and see if we can come up with something. Um, we've talked about seeing how maybe we can approach our healthy communities, Kansas Health Foundation, and see if we can change up our how we set our budget for the next year, maybe if we talk to them. Um, but I'm not, I don't have any support right now. Okay. We can and try to come up with I can tell you that the safe routes grant from KDOT won't cover the phase one engineering that, that's on there. There may be another option that she has available, but the, from KDOT they do. So I can look into something as well as yeah, because I think that the council was under the impression that somebody, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. um, that we were agreeable to going forward with this as long as we weren't looking at any money out of pocket at this point. I think we would need far more detailed conversation about what if the project would entail before we're going to be willing to spend money on the project. And I will add, for the council's benefit, the school district is very interested in this project and might be willing to do some cost sharing. That was the indication that Superintendent Meyer gave me earlier today. So, and he also made that statement in reference to the 820 if we get to that phase. But he hasn't talked to the board about it yet. So, how long do we have to to decide on this? The phase one grant application is due July 18th. So we've got a little less than two months. Yeah, and that, you need that time. It's getting pretty close, yeah. I mean, we wouldn't want to go, I mean, you have another meeting in two weeks, yeah, we wouldn't want to go past that, really, to, to have enough time to get to put together and do a good job. So, um, other than looking into seeing if I can come up with funding so that it's not out of your pocket, um, what else would you like for me between now and the next one? What are the council's thoughts? What I, I mean, what actually is this? I mean, I don't say for outside of school, but well, let me give you a handout. While you're doing that, I will speak. Uh, I believe I have bought that map in the county. Tell her what you want to turn it off. Right. I don't believe they would give it to you. Okay. So it, it sounds like it is available. I, there was a guy out there that works with oil and gas, and he, he told me that he thought that it would be available that it might be charged. He didn't know what it was. Uh, uh, Maryland and Carl are both supposed to be in the office tomorrow. So, so the top paragraph in that handout have an overview of what the Safe Routes program does. It's to encourage and enable uh, children uh, to walk or bicycle to school. That's the main thrust of this. Uh, this focuses on kindergarten through eighth grade. And it's to promote a healthy lifestyle, really. Uh, I have a little definition there of phase one and what it, what it does. 
different in that phase one grants application asking for funds to create a, a safe route to school plan. That plan has to encompass those next five bullet points, the five E's. So if you're accepted for the phase one, the plan addresses those five E's, engineering, education, enforcement, encouragement, and evaluation. So it's kind of a holistic approach to getting kids to walk to school. The engineering part of it uh, boils down to sidewalk construction. And there's $200,000 available for sidewalk construction in that, in that category. So if you talk to KDOT, they will chide you if you call it a sidewalk program because they, they want it, it's, it's bigger than that. You know, we're educating the kids on safe walking, and safe biking, um, encouraging, you know, they want community partners in this. Uh, and we talk some, some brainstorming things. There's, I don't know if you've heard of a walking school bus, you know, where they recruit people to walk the route after the sidewalk's built and walk the route, and pick up the little ones, you know, and walk to school, get them, because a lot of parents aren't comfortable with their kids walking, so then you have adult supervision. So that kind of thing comes in in the encouragement, uh, bicycle rodeos, uh, that the you know, police department could put on, you know, that's something that would be worked out in the planning stage of this, the safe process to school plan. We'd like to have service organizations involved, like Lions, uh, Rotary, uh, and maybe they would donate helmets at the bicycle or rodeo, you know, that kind of thing. So KDOT wants to see this as a community program and you put together your, your safe routes plan. Okay, so for your consulting services, what would you be doing? Well, there's uh, let's see if I've got one. In, in the phase one, they want to know what the uh, current conditions are, what the current obstacles are for kids walking the bike with the school right here. So I would I'll be talking with the superintendent and the principals to find out you know, what they feel the obstacles are. Uh, and then we talk to community members, I talk to the police department, and I would actually write the grant application. Now, we've got, we've got help here with Sydney, so she would be assisting on that, but I would, I would take pictures and actually write the grant application. We had, they sent home, or the, actually the parent, excuse me, teachers did uh, a, a tally, a student tally, the last few days of school on how they got to school. Did they walk, did they bike, did the parents drop them off? So we have a stack of those and their software from the Safe Routes to School National Clearinghouse that I would, would, would enter all that information into and it spits out a report. And that would be included uh, in the grant application of the phase one. Well, I can tell you that the school district always already does an annual bike rodeo with K through six every year. Um, the police department is heavily involved in that. They get home helmets donated every year. That's already being done through the school district. So I don't know if we would need to do something in addition to that, but that's something that's already established in the community. Well, if you want to pursue the, the safe routes grant application, I mean, that's good that you're doing that already. It needs to be documented and put in the, the application so that they can see that you're progressing. What, what type of documentation would you be looking for? If you have pictures. News coverage. News coverage. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we would hold at least one public meeting between now and the deadline. Uh, we've talked about maybe doing a, a walk audit. Those are all things that we could do to bring awareness to the current conditions and try to build support for a safe rest to school plan. So where does council want to go with this? Well, I really think we've spent enough money for a while before I stand. Else? In this fair amendment, we get a second of the $40,000. Okay, so do we have 
get ordered. No, they didn't post that information. Uh, they usually announce both the phase one and the phase two at the same time. And for phase two, you get out the site visits to each applicant to turn one in. So I would not expect the awards to come out until the end of the year, possibly even early next year. Next meeting, can we put it on the agenda for next meeting and maybe get Josh's or the school board's stand on it and what they think they can do? We'll have a board meeting before then, but we'll have a meeting. Yes, we'll have a meeting before then. We'll have a meeting before then. Maybe yeah. she could find out what. If I can come up with some funding. Brock, if you can explore other options for us, bring it to the table, that'd be good. But, um, options as in. Putting the plan together or funding? Funding. Okay, well, we'll table it to the next meeting then. Um, Sydney, if you could do some follow up, that would be great. And I will give Mr. Meyer and make sure that he comes to the board at the next meeting to have him give us some feedback on what he thinks we should do. Thank you. 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 Thank for us to talk to the community, would it consist of just signs and painting on the sidewalk? What actually would, what would we see to show there's a safe route to school? Well, in this phase one, you know, we're just asking for money to put the safe route across the school plan together. So there, there wouldn't be anything we would do out, unless we did a walk audit. And that's something that we talked about that we might do. If we did a walk audit, then we would, Know, put out information in the newspaper and have a public meeting to talk about you know what the design standards, current design standards are for sidewalks. Everything has to be ADA accessible. So you, you have, have a look you have a town that we could go look at. That's my the finished product of the safe route. Do you uh, see it visually oh, or yeah. you just have to be trained on it and the kids oh, remember? No. It, I mean when you put a new sidewalk in a town, especially you know, a town that's, that has a lot of missing sidewalk, like St. John does, I walk from the school up to the park, and you know, there is some good sidewalk, and there's some where it's missing, and some where it's broke up real bad. So there's kind of a, you know, it just broad range of conditions on the sidewalk. Uh, with with Kidot Safe Route, their preferred sidewalk, sidewalk width is six feet. Uh, they will allow a design exception down to five, you know, if the conditions warrant it. But most sidewalk is, you know, from, from years ago was put in at four feet. And that doesn't really accommodate bicycles or adults really walking side by side. Now this this is geared towards the kids, but of course whole communities will use the sidewalk. So we did one in the other where my office is, and it gets a lot of use from adult walkers and joggers and whatnot. So uh, yeah, so I mean, a new six foot wide sidewalk in your town is uh, very noticeable. All the all the ramps are ADA accessible. Which you have a lot of some ramps in town. Not not very many have the truncated domes. The, the, you know what I'm talking about? The, the, there's bricks or there's mats that have the, the raised nubs on them for the visually impaired. Uh, so any of those ramps don't meet the current ADA standards. So they would have to be replaced. Even if it was ramp, they would be replaced as part of the end of this program. Uh, once it complied with the ADA guidelines. Okay. Any other questions?
Series. Chief Sanders? I don't have anything. Chief Sailor? Uh, my first item, I need a, a purchase approval. Um, this is going to be for uh, billing from the city attorney um, that goes over my spending authority. Um, however, there's some line items on there that I'm not sure that uh, my department should be responsible for paying for. Um, so when I talked to the mayor, she suggested I bring it before you guys and discuss that with you. Um, and, and with Rod here, then you can provide maybe some more explanation. Yep. Some of the, I've got a copy for everybody. Okay, yep, that would be great. Might have to take another. Basically, the ones I have a question about, um, I, I, I tried to number them. Um, the line item that's under date 414, um, that has to do with uh, with uh, city tickets and things like that, so obviously I don't have a problem with that one. Um, and there's, there's there's not a date on the, on, but number one, reference case 13 CR 44, Aaron Alcorn versus Mark Jasper. Uh, draft a letter to Chief Police Officer Brown to restore the property to have used with the county attorney. This is a district court case, so I'm not understanding why um, basically the police department would be billed uh, for something that the city attorney is not going to have any part of prosecuting that case. Um, essentially, this uh, has to do with the fact that our county attorney does not communicate with us and was using the city attorney as a middleman, uh, what it appears to me, to get us to. Uh, take some action on a case. Um, number two, in reference to uh, conference with Judge Walters on BFW security issues and criminal case issues. I signed off on that one. I don't have an issue with that one because there's a, there's a possibility that Judge Walters could be hearing that case. Now, of course, after they've conferred, I, I don't know whether or not that would happen. 418, letter from county attorney on the BFW, number three. Uh, number four, conference with deputy sheriff, reference to BFW problem. Number five, conference with city attorney or county attorney reference VFW problem. Again, these are the case that we have with the VFW is going to be heard in district court, um, which I don't understand. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the VFW issue was brought to my attention both by the judge and by the county attorney, and I discussed it with the sheriff's department had the opportunity to, the, it goes to the issue of the fight they had and the officer they had out there that really was fortunate he didn't get hurt, almost got, got in over his head that night. And it, it boils down to the, uh, basically the Hispanic dances that you're having out there have gotten out of control. And the discussion was about uh, it, it, an ordinance, and you came in discussing an ordinance. He came in, in fact, I think that's what triggered it, was you're coming to my office and that's when I talked to the county attorney judge. He came into my office discussing the possibility of an ordinance requiring um, a um, requiring that's, that's have true. security, provide their own security, and I asked him to get me a copy of the security, the people that they were used that they had used for security at Great Bend. He thought they had a brochure. I said, "Get me their information and let me talk to them because we can use that as a basis for minimum security requirements, so that when you put something in the ordinance." In the ordinance, they just don't go out and get somebody off the street and say, "Okay, we've complied, you see, and we've got we've got security that's that's adequate." So all of that triggered this whole situation, and I was discussing the case with the county attorney because his comment was, "That's where the bulk of his problems in this town are coming out of are the dances out there at the BFW, when the, and especially after hours and it's across the street from the rest home." So that's. The, so that's the conversations all and really what triggered it was when Adam came in and brought it to my attention that he was wanting to look at an ordinance, he was to get me back some information on the security officers and in the meantime the, the county attorney has advised me that the problem may get solved in that I don't know if their license is going to be renewed. And I, I, I'm not sure I'm privileged to go into all the registration on the council council on, on my discussions on that, but be, be, it, uh, be that as it is, that
that's the background on this, and it's that's the discussion. So it's okay, the time I spent. First question would be is why is the county attorney dealing with Chief Salem? I think there's a communication problem both ways. The, the one on this, what you've got here on this one situation was he had asked repeatedly, and I saw some of the letters, for uh, investigations to be done on this to, to eliminate things down. Uh, there's there's some there's some communications that can prove it's going to be done both ways on the situations. Uh, okay. Joe is a darn good county attorney, but he's not the easiest guy to communicate with. I get along with him fine, and we've got a good working relationship, and that's probably why he's going through me. Well, I guess I just have trouble with the citizens of this community paying for legal fees that result from communication issues. Well, I mean, that's a maybe. You want me to? You want me to just say nothing and not get the job done? I mean, I don't care. No, that's not what I'm saying. I, what I'm saying is that the county attorney needs to be dealing with our chief of police. Is what I'm saying. Of the yes and no. If I am the chief law enforcement officer for the city, and that's the position I'm in, it just as he's the chief law enforcement officer for the county, this is not out of line for him and for us to communicate at all. Anybody else have any thoughts or comments? Well, my take on it, anytime you go visit with an attorney, an attorney converses with another attorney that even though you talk to this attorney you can't talk to two attorneys at the same time ever said the same thing in my experience if you talk to one attorney and you tell him where you're at then that attorney takes it to the other attorney yeah about you guys yeah it's as simple as one attorney takes care of this another attorney takes care of this it's conflict of interest for this attorney to take care of adam and this attorney of the same attorney to take care of anywhere else on that matter. No, there's no conflict of interest on that matter. It's the same interest. We've got the same interest. The interest is the law enforcement. Right. It's just different positions of authority. Right. I think it needs to go through. We've got a city police officer going to a city business representing a, a dispute or a fight or whatever it was how I guess I'm having a hard time understanding why that's count. Because we're, because, because we're not a, we're, we're a smaller town, we're not a court of record. Any, any major misdemeanors or felonies have to be heard in district court. You don't have a jail, the county does, and, well they, they farm it out, but you can, you can have them handled here, but they'll be handled much more efficiently through the county attorney's office because what are you going to do when it comes to incarceration? You're not geared up to incarcerate anybody. Anybody else? You know, um, I'm not really exactly sure how all of this operates, um, so I'm not going to pretend that I do. But from just looking at this, no offense, but it looks like we're being nickeled and dimed. Do you sorry, want, that's okay, do you want me to not, do you want me to tell the county attorney not to contact me with any of these problems? Is that what you want? Because I'd be happy to do that. I don't need to be in the loop if you don't want me in the loop. I was trying to expedite the situation and the situation was started with, the, with the, your police chief coming in and wanting a, 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 an ordinance change requiring security. That brought me into the loop. So once we got into it, we tried to solve the problem. Now, these problems will come up, and it may be whatever it is down the road, these situations will come up. Do you want me to say, well, the council does want me to touch these. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't handle this. Go get somebody else. I think it depends on the issue. Um, so how am I going to know ahead of time? I, I understand that. Well, I, I mean, on the, on the, the scope of communication issues, I've got documentation proving all the times. Uh, I learned a long time ago that because there was uh, doc, or, uh, communication issues, anytime I send anything to Chief Act's office, 
he or his uh, secretary signs for it. I've got receipts for all of it. In reference to this case with uh, um, Harry Al Gordon and Mark Jasper, um, to get to just some background on that, the there was stolen property that was was located here in town. We did a search warrant. We got the stolen property back. The property was stolen out in the county. During the search warrant, Officer Brown spoke with the deputy, and it was agreed between them because the case originated in the county and the stolen property was in the county. That sheriff's deputy was going to was going to conduct the interview of that suspect. That didn't happen, which is obviously out of our control. Um, so then, in February, a letter was sent to Charlie from the county attorney asking him to do that. Charlie contacted him in court and said this is the agreement that was made and she back agreed to speak with the deputy and that is also documented in Charlie's report. In April, we get another letter from uh, the county attorney and in her regards to this way, Charlie just finally said, okay, I've had enough, I'm gonna go ahead and go get the interview conducted and get it done so we can get this taken care of. So again, the, I don't see any reason why well, uh, Mr. Sheepak couldn't have given me a call or you need to talk to him on that. He asked, well, me, that's, to contact, that's, he asked me to contact the city. He, had, he gave me the background and he says, well, you see, I need that interview done. Can you expedite this? I said, so I got it. And, and, and I guess my issue is, is at the end of the letter I sent you recently where I asked you, you know, I, I as near as I can read my budget, I don't have a line item for the city attorney. So it doesn't behoove my budget or, or any of these things to, again, in, in, in the aspect of trying to make things go faster and smoother, to me, to have somebody in the middle communicating because somebody doesn't want to pick up the phone doesn't make any sense to me. <coughs> like I said, I've got documentation. Every time I send him a letter... I'm not arguing with that. I'm just... I'm, well, I'm, what, what's that's, the council want? I need direction from the council. What's the council want me to do? Okay, I just... Before we get to that, I have this last item that I what was that in reference to? He came in on his issue of the ticket that he had, and, and I discussed the issue. He gave me the background with it. I told him I can't discuss this with you. You can discuss it with me if you wish, but you got to understand I'm representing the city. Okay. Why are we being billed for something that he came to you? No, no, no. Because I'm sitting in the city. Because I'm sitting in the city's position on that. And I says, here's what you need to do. You need to file. You need to pay it or contest it. And and. Uh, he wanted to know what the uh, what the fines were and the, and the ranges on them, and you know that's cheaper than going to court with him over it. Okay. I need a consensus from council as far as how we want to handle this situation going forward. What well, I, I wholeheartedly understand when you've got an attorney hired. And somebody comes in to that attorney, he's got to take the city's spot. He's representing the city. Okay. Like this last deal on that, I didn't know anything about this. But you'd have to, if you were an attorney or work for the city, somebody come in, you'd have to take the city's side, explaining to him what he needs to do according to where the city's at. You understand what I'm saying? Correct me, or you guys jump in here. I don't mean to be doing all the The only way to end this is you would have him on a retainer. Mm -hmm. You write him a check for so much every month. And, that, and that that's not what them. he wanted us to do. Well, it's cheaper to do it this way than to do the retainer for what? 99% of the stuff. Yeah, they're doing. Very, very certain times of the year that could be correct. But it seems to me that the communication between Chief Sailor. County attorney and Rod just needs to improve. It needs to, whether he wants to contact you or not, it's irrelevant. He needs to contact you, period, whenever it come, comes to this. And Rod needs to be, in my opinion, needs to be free to be able to assist you and get this done smoothly. Because if that's the only way it's going to be done, well, then I'm all for that. But, you know, I'm seeing, I, I just, like I said, I see this and I, I, I don't know how it works. That's all I'm saying on it. But I mean, he, as our chief law enforcement, you need to have the freedom to, to be able to do this. But we need to, the communication just needs to be better. 
by all three parties. I'm not putting the blame on any one person, but it just needs to improve so we avoid this again. What would your retaining fee be, bro? Well, I'd have to guess at what kind of hours we've got. Um, oh, I'd want to think on that a little bit. Uh, again, we'd have to define what are we talking about here on it. Uh, I thought I was trying to save you money by not coming to the council meetings except when you absolutely needed me, type thing, right. you know. Uh, but the other side of the coin is, uh, what we might do is look at what what is run, and what about, we've done this for about a year now, see what is averaged, and then see, see, see if that's going to be normal, and to take a look at it periodically and make a you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I, I think, I don't know what you were paying before, but it was so much a meeting or something. Yeah, we were paying $800 a month. Well, it depends on how much of this you have. You see what I mean? Right. Some months you'll run, you'll run more than others. Yeah. Well, I'm just, I mean, that way... I mean, if, there, if somebody gets a ticket and they're going to go in and, and have to talk to you about it every time, just for, you know, whether it's a quarter, half hour, or whatever. But that's, that, mean, quarter, that quarter hour would have been cheaper than coming over here and trying the ticket. I, I'm understanding that. But I, I'm kind of like her. I don't understand how, I, and like I said, I, I don't understand, but I don't understand why. If, if I get a ticket and I go talk to somebody else's lawyer, why they have to pay for me to talk to them? I'm representing the city. I'm not representing them. Well, I understand that, but I mean... Yeah, if we had you on retainer, we would understand your quarter hour. What you're saying is if it's on retainer, it's okay, but since I'm not on retainer, I can't go for it. No, no, I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just saying it's the same deal. It just seems... <clears throat> I, I guess I don't understand why... Basically, it took a quarter, I guess to me, a quarter of an hour to tell somebody that I can't talk to you about okay. it because he, I'm he, on the he city side. He comes in, he comes in and sits down. He starts to explain what the situation is. I says, first of all, I represent the city. So about anything you're telling me, I can use the evidence against you. He agrees to that. Then he starts to explain it. He wants to know what the, the, the defining area would be and he wanted to explain the background. It's the same information he brought in court. Had I have been in court on it, it would have been the same questioning that I would have got him out of him. So it was to my advantage to get the information. Okay. You see? Because I could use the same information and it already warned him I could. But that was agreeable to him. He wanted to explain it. I said, it's fine. And then I said, go talk to the judge. Here's what we'll do. Talk to the judge. And it's over. Oh, it's safe to trial over here in court. All right, well, if you would look at um, what you would need in the way of retainer and get back to us on that, okay. that would be good. Um, just doing some quick math. We're right in that ballpark. We're just slightly over, but not a lot. Um, if we're going to stay with how we're doing it now, we just need to have John develop line items in each of the budgets next year for legal services for where we're going to be charging stuff. And in the meantime, we're back to the original issue, which is this bill is over out spending authority, so we need approval for him to pay it. So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries high vote. Thank you. Thank you. Adam, I might suggest that you might talk to the people that are out of the DFW and uh, explain to them they need to contact you when there is festivities going on out there and they need to try to control that deal themselves. We've, we've done that. Yeah, we've, I run that thing for about seven or eight years. And I don't think I remember calling the cops maybe a couple times. Yeah. I met them at the door when they come. 
Yeah, we've we've had lengthy discussions. Okay, thank you. Yep. What's what great men do? Do they even allow them? I mean, do they allow dances in? There's uh, there's certain I know. I want to say it's the Knights of Columbus. Certain uh, organizations have banned them altogether, um, and other ones have uh, just their own policies have made them require security. Okay. But um, there's nothing like on a citywide basis. It's that, each, that I'm not it's sure. each individual organization. But yeah, the, uh, okay. as far as I know, they just took it upon themselves, each individual organization, to make it in their own policies to require security. Do you have anything else? Just The next item is mine. Um, it's my understanding that the agreement that we reached in executive session last week with regards to what was formerly the Oliver property is no longer on the table. You're not agreeable to it any longer. That's correct. Okay, we've, we've got an issue here. Um, this is a conflict of interest. I don't, I've had different people approach me about it. I've had people approach me and suggest that perhaps we need to get an independent attorney in here to look at the situation and to see how it needs to be resolved. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we have a breach of contract with Mr. Oliver in that he was supposed to have given the city any proceeds from the property. Yes, it boils down to this, though. Uh, Kevin has purchased and stepped into Mr. Oliver's shoes. He did that without the city council or anyone here knowing. Because Mr. Oliveira, correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, but he approached you about buying the property. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you paid the back taxes on it. And I believe you explained to me that you were willing to hold the city harmless on the demolition costs on the building. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. If he has stepped into the city, into Mr. Oliver's shoes, and owns the property, actually he's, he's helped us because we don't have to buy it now and pay any of the back items due on them. Those are his problems. If he holds us completely harmless on the demolition, that's better than we were hoping to come out when of was the first place. Sign? Huh? When was the deed signed? I don't know. Do you have a copy of the I got a huge issue with this from when that deed was signed. And he sat in here and voted and had everything to do with that building being torn down. And not once did it ever come out that he had possession of that property at the point that he was making the decision. Did you did you buy it before or after we, we had our meeting? Well, after. Here's yeah. Here's the I was approached to buy the corner building, 400 North Main. That has nothing to do with it. Yeah, a small businessman. A small businessman was approached to buy that building. That small businessman moved to the next building, so, so I can maintenance the side of my building. And that, that's not what I'm saying. I mean, you sat in here and voted on crap after you already no. had possession of it. No, I don't believe that's the case. I think the voting on that was all done before the deed was signed. Yeah. Before you bought it. Yeah. But, but <coughs> before the deed was signed. Whether, whatever the voting was on it, the fact of the matter is, is that, yes, while I appreciate the fact that you're a small businessman, you're also a city councilman. And as such, there are some things you just don't do, and this is one of them, because it's a conflict of interest. I mean, yes, you you bought the building next door. We don't have any way of knowing when those conversations started to take place. For all we know, you were having those conversations about that other building 
before we ever agreed to demo the all of our property. Possible. Possible. Nobody has any way of knowing that. And because all of this was done quietly, in, and I realize you, small businessmen, private business, but again, because you sit on the council, you have an unfair advantage over other people in the community. And it just, it's put all of us in a really bad spot. It makes the city look bad, it makes the council look bad, it makes us look like we're dealing with stuff under the table and behind closed doors. And nobody wants that. So at this point, I don't know how we resolve it. Um, rumor mill and whatever, I've heard that there's a possibility that there could be a suit, but whether or not that's going to happen, I don't know. But just hearing that there's a possibility makes me really uncomfortable because it tells me somebody's upset enough that they're going to make an issue out of it. So I've contacted the League of Kansas Municipalities. I haven't gotten anywhere. They have not been real helpful in this situation. I need direction from council as far as how we want to proceed with this issue. Can I make a, can I make a suggestion? I've thought a lot about this. Well, we've probably made some mistakes, and that's part of being on the council, part of being human. Here's my suggestion to get the thing cleared up. Take this for what it's worth and see what you think. Some probably not going to like it, some might. That piece of property over there has no longer got a building on it. We started out with that piece of property with an old, dilapidated, dilapidated building. We wanted to clean up the ice. That's what the council first decided to do. I think with the situation arising here, there's only one fair way to do this. Figure up the bill split the property in half, give it to one of one part of it to the north council or the north property owner, the other half to the south property owner, and get this thing behind us. And, and everybody there? signs off on a liability of the loss. That's assuming that the north property owner will pay half and will assume that. Liability. Exactly. Now if one of them chooses not to pay half, then if the other one wants to, then sell it thing and get it behind us. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. But the problem is, is that we don't have the authority to do that because we don't own the property. Okay. And I guess that will work. The, the agreement that was talked about last time, Kevin, uh, you no longer want to do go that route. If you don't, then what is your answer to to it? What do you want to do? How do you want to take care of this? This whole situation. I mean, ultimately, it falls on you. I mean, if you're yeah, part of this, yeah, ultimately, I didn't do anything that any citizen or other businessman could do legally. Go buy a piece of property from a person, an individual, private treaty, file the deed legally. Except no. that. Mr. Oliveira breached a contract when he sold you the property, when he quit collecting you the property. And you knew that contract existed. I, I wasn't aware of any contract. Maybe it was a verbal contract. I don't know. No, it's a no, written it, contract. No, we sat in here and voted on it. Yeah, we sat in here and did that. All of us. Well, he didn't mention it. He shouldn't have had to, Kevin. Kevin, Remember you knew about the this. You knew about it. You have a signed contract? Mm -hmm. Yeah, signed agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, the gist of that signed agreement was that the building would be torn down and then sold, and the proceeds would go to the city, and we were hoping to recoup up to half of the cost of demolition. That was that was the general feeling. If you hold the city harmless. 
on any cost to the city on this thing. I don't know that there's any liability to the city because what you did, we had no knowledge of. You see what I mean? And if we're held harmless, we don't have a claim back against you. What happens from there in a conflict situation is, is really your problem. I don't see it as the city's problem. Except that it's not the city's problem because we're the deep pockets. But we're also the, I mean, it just makes us look like, like you said. Yeah. Look, Every time we go into executive session, somebody's trying to get ahead, using it for their own personal good. That's the perception from what he just said. That is the perception yeah. from in a lot area. of people in this yeah. town. And by what it, this whole situation, what it has done, has just given validity to those who have said it all along that people on this council are here for nothing but for themselves. And, and that's what they are looking at, regardless whether it's the truth or not. That is the perception out there right now. And it puts all of us in a bad light. Well, if he holds the city harmless, that's better than what we were thought we were going to get out of this thing as a city. That's just the city's position. The conception out here. I don't know at this point in time how you undo that unless you, unless he deeds it to the city and then you've stepped into a bigger mess than we just got out of if he holds it harmless. So that puts a fiduciary responsibility on you guys on whether you want to accept his offer or, or uh, because he, you know, it's up to him if he, if he deeds it to the city or not. Well, part of the problem here is, is that we accept an offer. And the next morning he came to you and said, no, I don't want to do that. Am I, am I mistaken in my statement? No, I thought it was taken care of last time. So did I. So, you know, that's part of the problem right now is that we had a verbal agreement. And then the next morning you decided that that wasn't what you wanted to do after all. And so now here we are again. And the question still stands. What is your solution to this? My solution and my conception is that any time the city demolishes a structure for uh, any reason, Bob could back me up and maybe Mel, they always assess the cost of that on that property to the owner at the courthouse. I don't know that there's ever been any other way Usually, in the past, it's just a $250 fee. Now, we have had some where we... That, that's when they're willing. They can't be willing. willing no, we've had some, yes, you're, you're correct. I'm talking about the lot pit structure we have to tear down. We, we, they don't cooperate, and we don't do the $250. Yeah. I, think, I think that is correct. Yeah. They'll correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't that what happened down on North Main Street on that trailer house? Did one that applied to the taxes? Well, South I think so. I, I don't know if it ever it was, not for sure, but then on some of them that had that, you guys, you know, we wrote that off. But that would, you know, we send them, would send them a bill or whatever if they don't pay it, then that's what we would Also in the past, I've seen it go to sheriff's sale, and they start the bidding at that amount. Once, maybe twice, over an amount of years. And they never get a bid. And this last time is probably the only time that we, uh, we dissolve that money and said start the bidding at zero, get them sold. Right. We, we wrote we wrote down. Right. 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 If the property sure. owner doesn't take care of it. But that was all purchased out in the open to the public. Mm -hmm. Everybody had the option to do that. You, me, Joe Blow down the street. The way that was acquired is all under the table. And due to your knowledge of everything else. Yeah. It, it may be that way. And you're on. It is. You never it's a huge honest. conflict of interest. Like yeah. any businessman. It doesn't matter. You're forgetting the whole point about being a conflict of interest. It doesn't matter whether you're a businessman or a citizen. A conflict of interest is conflict of interest. We wouldn't be sitting here if it was just you as Kevin Davis' business owner. Okay, let me let me back up just a minute. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Steinmates, but I do believe you found yourself in a similar situation several years ago. And you were told that it was a conflict of interest. Yes, I did. And you walked away from the property because you didn't want to be in that situation. Yes, I did. How's that any different? May not be. I was not told. You're on. <laughs> I, that's where I stand. I'm on a piece of property, yeah. and I'm going to stand on it. Yeah. Kevin, do you not see it? Do you not no. see this? I mean, I'm this in. is a huge conflict of interest. You have what is basically insider information that nobody else is privy to. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, if I'm absorbing all the costs, the demolition. You know, if I if I went in there trying to get something for nothing, I could see that. Who's to say you didn't? You just got caught, so now you're just wanting to say, well, no, I was going to pay everything. Yeah. Well, that's the whole perception. You never and came that's to what I'm and said, hey, I got this deal going. It involves the Oliveira property. I want to pay for the demolition costs and take care of it. You didn't do that. I mean, a even to me, it looks like you came to a work. council member and then Mel brought it to my attention. And so before anybody had a chance to let the community know, hey, yeah, we realize there's a potential conflict here, but we're going to stand up and we're going to be out in front and we're going to take care of it, we never got that opportunity. Yeah, the only channels I went through, I called Mel Chesbrook and I called Ron Lawrence. I said, Ron, I bought the G building. Mel bought the G building. I'm going to see if I can buy the Oliveira property. Yeah, you did. didn't tell me you were going to see if you could buy all your property. Yeah. No, I didn't. I heard about it after you bought it. No, that's not the way I remember. Okay, well, here's my issue with that statement. I have a quick claim deed that's dated February 24th that wasn't filed with the Register of Deeds until April 1st. I have a grant deed on the 400 North Main property that's dated March 3rd, which is a week and a half after this deed that was recorded on the 25th of March. The fact that this document was drawn and signed on the 24th of April, you had title to that building before you ever took title to this. That's a misconception. <laughs> How is it a misconception, Kevin? What's it's the, right what's here. What's the date of the notarization? I'm not worried about the date of the notarization. I'm looking at the date of the document. Just because it wasn't notarized until the 1st of April, this document is dated February 24th. Well, again, as a council, we need to decide how we want to proceed from here. We have, it, the way I see it, is we have a couple of options. We can let Mr. Lyons pursue it as far as the legalities and what we can do, if there's charges that can be filed, what can be done here. And I, not necessarily, I'm, the contract was with Mr. Oliver, so to me that's where the breach of contract is. We can go after him. Um, we can hire an independent attorney to look into the conflict of interest. And I, I would suggest that you do that because you've now put me in a conflict because I, it, I am likely to be a witness in this thing if it gets that far. Okay. You see, and that would put me in a, in a, con in a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. yeah. It would. Or? We can let Mr. Davis retain, I mean, we can't keep him from retaining title to the property, but we can say, okay, fine, you're bad, you screwed up, write a check, and that makes it all good. I don't know what else to do. I know I don't appreciate being put in this position.
I don't see how the council can save face if you just do the second option. You guys are the um, decision makers. I, I can't make the call. You guys have to. Uh, well, I, I don't see how the council can save face if you don't. To where it doesn't make the council look like the council's got another idiots. problem here. And that is you've got a fiduciary responsibility to the taxpayers of this community. And if he is willing to hold use harmless on the demolition, I question the wisdom of turning that down. That doesn't solve these other problems, but it does it does have you keeping the city's the cost to the city to zero as far as that demolition on that building. And you may want to, you may not want to make a decision tonight. You may want to get the independent that she was talking about to give another view of this before you make a decision on it. Because Kevin's standard willing to pay the demolition, as far as I understand it, is his position. My position would be to have an outsider come in and get, get their opinion agreed. Because I think there's a lot of issues here we don't understand. Do we have a ballpark as far as what we're willing to spend up to in the way of legal fees in regards to this matter? Or are we just going to let it ride and do what we need what, to do to make what it? What do you think to have just a second opinion? I mean, to have somebody come in and, you know what I'm saying? Yep, yeah, that varies on who you're going to contact and how much you're going to. How many hours worth yeah. of work are we talking? I don't know. Uh, he's probably going to do some research on the case law, background on these situations. He's going to look at the statute, as I have, of conflict of interest. That conflict of interest statute is very vague. And the consequences of it are minimal at best in many ways. It, 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 I, I was, I was uh, not impressed with the statute. Now, having said that, I, I don't know how long it will take him to, make a, to, to, to answer your question. I, you know, uh, whether he can do it in a couple of hours or whether it's going to take him a half a day or a day, I don't know. You know, because so we, because there's a lot of research he, he, did, he did additional information. He, now you you've already done a bunch of it. You could supply it to him. Uh, the information we've got on the deeds, mm -hmm. the information's on the meetings, and this sort of thing, and that would help. Do you, do you know of anybody that would give us a second opinion, Roddy? Uh, yeah, I let me do some checking on that. Actually, that's not necessary. I've already found somebody who's willing to take it on at the recommendation of the Great Bend City Attorney. Well, uh, I do agree. It needs to be totally known by He wasn't willing to, but he recommended yeah. me to somebody for me to go to. Who do you recommend? Alan Glendenny. Alan, be good. So, and he's willing to take it on. He is? Yes, he is. Uh, I don't know how you put a limit on it, I guess, or what you do. I think you describe, describe the, here. You describe the you problem. Got, you got twenty five hundred bucks. Give us, give us an answer. I mean, I, I don't see how you okay, can do that. What, what are we going to gain from it? You're going to gain some legitimacy in an outside opinion coming in, and nobody in this room, man, you know, they're independent of it. You see what I mean? I think in the eyes of community, you're probably going to gain some legitimacy there. Now, it's going to cost you some money to do it. And you're going to gain some peace of mind out of it. I think in this case the taxpayers might be willing to flip that bill. So what I'm looking for then is a motion to approve the hire of Alan Glendening to perform an independent investigation on the conflict of interest with regards to the Oliveira property. So moved. Second. I'll choose to accept. All in favor? All right, we need to have discussion, don't we? I'd like to okay. open for discussion. Yep, I'm sorry. Is yes. the council sure this is the direction they want to go? Because I've got, I don't know. Okay. I really don't know. Well, my personal theory is on it. We had it solved 
So everybody tried to save face, especially that. him. I understand that. And he pretty much gave us the middle finger, so yeah. I'd say this is exactly the route we need to go. This is the way we need to go. What are you thinking about? I'm, 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 I'm thinking of similar to the same thing, only trying to clean up our city winds up in a big mess like this. It, I was trying to find some way that we could get it resolved in-house. I understand that, but... Uh, one way or another. But we tried that already. Okay. I mean, at least that's my opinion. I, I can't speak for council, but that's my opinion. So, is there any further discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries 3-2. Three, 3-1, three, didn't he abstain? Okay, 3-1, with one abstention. Okay. Now you've got an ordinance resolution number 724 that is way out of detail. Uh, it has uh, impound fees $20 a day for a dog. Fine for a dog at large is $10 plus court costs. Well, for, I would suggest the council raise that to $100 per dog per incident and leave it within the discretion of the judge that these people, if it's a one-time situation and, and they're not habitual, if the judge can come down from that or just say court costs, if they're a repeat offender, $10 per dog, they'll get that much enjoyment watching our police chase that dog around. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chief Saylor, what do we, I mean, food, water, shelter for the animals, what does that run us? Can you give me a ballpark? It just depends on how many dogs we have in there. I mean, it, it, okay, if we have one dog in there. You got one dog fed, I mean. Officers' time to go out and water and feed and yeah. buy dog food, and what are we looking at a day for one dog? Is it $20 reasonable still? Well, I don't, I, I don't think the. The 20, or actually, the way the way I think the actual ordinance reads is it's a twenty dollar initial fee, then three dollars a day. Well, not according to this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then this says the impound fee shall be twenty dollars per day, effective immediately. Okay. That's probably sufficient for holding the, the dog. Yes, the twenty dollars a day is sufficient. I, I don't disagree that the ten dollar fine um, needs to be raised. It does need to be raised. I know Stafford raised theirs to a hundred dollars a couple years ago, um, but something you know, and obviously we have discretion to. As far as it goes, I mean, it would, we know who our repeat offenders are with dogs at parks. We know the ones that, if there's a storm or something like that, they get out maybe twice a year. And typically, we know the, who the dog belongs to, and they're not an issue. We return the thing home. And, I mean, we still may write a ticket, but lots of times it makes more sense to just take the thing home than it does to take it down to the town and have it be down there, feed and water it for, for it to be down there a couple hours, and the owner come get it. And then we got to clean out the pen when it wasn't necessary. Where the problem comes is the repeat offender. This isn't any kind of deterrent to the repeat offender. I just, the reason I was asking the questions is if we're going to revise it, we might as well revise the whole thing. And I just you, wanted to You make might sure. take off the fee uh, for a kennel license. I'm not even sure we want to get, if they meet the state kennel requirements, I think I'd live with that and, and, and not worry about the. Because I don't think you've ever even had a kennel license application. Have you? Well, we have, and, that, and that, that was an issue John and I spoke about. But it didn't make a whole lot of sense when they've already got to got to apply and meet the requirements of the state. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense to issue them a city kennel license when they're going to have one from the state. Okay, if you can re redraft it. Well. Sure. If, if council is agreeable, we'll have Mr. Um, Lyons redraft the. Um, Ordinance and bring it back to the next council meeting or send it back for the what, next council. What do you meeting. want? Do you want the hundred dollars per dog per incident? I think that's reasonable. That's what Stafford's doing. Does anybody but else? It'll have? be up to the judge to decide. Well, the judge, that'll be a maximum the judge can do. 
Right. And you know, but if the repeat offender I is, see some, I know, know if you get, get a dog out. That, well, and the police and a hundred dollar fee yeah, the chief, causes her yeah, a huge issue. The, the chief's chief already saying he's okay. handling that okay. it, it, anyway. So so we, and we also, take care of I just need the ability to hammer right, the, the repeat offender. I understand. I'm just saying. I just. Don't want, you know what I mean? Yeah. But we also one of these dog gets out one time. We also yeah. include we copies of our the narrative for our reports with the you know the judge and the city attorney gets to see also before court. So. Okay. Okay. He's going to draft it and bring it back for approval at the next meeting. Um, is that all you have on that? Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Williamson. I don't have anything. Okay. Um, old business. I believe this was in relation to the spending authority. Um, have a copy of the minutes. Yeah. From when. Back in 2000, 2000 um, Mel's in spending authority was increased from $500 to $2,000. Um, we just need to set an amount for the electric department. Um, my recommendation last meeting was that we set it at the same due to the nature of the type of parts that he may need to be buying in an emergency situation, um, but that's up to council's discretion. So, comments, suggestions? That amount works for me. Okay. What the rest of the council. You want to raise it to the same as the superintendent? Right. Kevin, you work with electric stuff. Is that is that fair amount? Oh, to have to go over her in an emergency or maybe in an emergency situation, that's why I'm going to touch it. Well, I realize that. Well, how much for me to everyday, yeah. everyday usage, it's, I mean, it's enough. I bought a reel of wire a while back. It's about $1,300 for a reel of wire. That's a question. You know, that's that's about the highest price thing we buy without coming to council, maybe for a load of poles or something later on, you know. But normally day-to-day -day stuff, 2000 is more than sufficient. And that's per item or per week or month? That's your purchase. It's worked so far. I mean, we we don't very seldom ever spend over. It. You know what I say, like for a real of wire. It's worked in the past. You know, other than like Jeff said, other poles, he's going to be able to operate. You know, we buy a large amount of transformers or something, but normally I replace them as we have problems. I, I had one brought in today that's probably in the seven or eight hundred dollar range. I mean, that's two thousand should be sufficient. You know, if it's over that, we'll come to council. time set up and the guy couldn't make it. We're going to set it up again. I'll get it done before next meeting. Yeah, I want, I want to be able to electronically read and download the information on the computer. I don't know what it's going to cost, but if I don't have the price, we don't have to start. So, being no other business, I take a meeting or a motion to adjourn. So moved. 